Hi folks, this is Nikhil and you are learning Golang with me. In this session, I am going to discuss how to have the item potency on the Kafka consumer side. So if you recall our last session, I discussed in depth about at least one delivery semantic in Golang Kafka client. Now, as a part of that, you know that or you must have noticed that we have made the enable auto commit as false and then it is the responsibility of the application to commit the message or the opposites onto the Kafka broker. Now, as a part of that, we already witnessed to the fact that even though there was nothing in our processing, there was no delay, there, the, there was no crash as such, um, there, there was no skipping uh, on our side in the application and the main go routine was continuously running so that there was no question of um, not identifying the crash of the go routine that handles the processing so whatever the scenarios that i discussed as a part of the at most once delivery semantic how the messages are get how the messages get lost uh, during the processing or during the delivery then um, all of those scenarios are not a, not at all possible still we have seen or we have witnessed to the fact that you may receive the duplicate messages so for example the 648 offset message we got it twice so kafka broker delivered that message twice similarly 642 we got it twice 639 we got it twice so it seems that uh, kafka broker once we have the um, I never want to commit as false. So, for example, let's say let's let's see this particular phenomenon. So, I have let's say I have uh, I have hundred of messages, and I produce this message onto the same topic onto the same partition, and now let's see how many messages turn out to be the duplicate uh, processing. So, I have this client and uh, 650, 651, 52, 54. So let's see uh, how many messages turn out to be the duplicate processing kind of situations. Now, uh, before we see the result of this, so you may see that result is zero because till now, I have not seen any of the message uh, that is getting processed in a duplicate fashion because all of the messages are being delivered only once. Our, uh, Kafka consumer is so thin, so lightweight and does nothing rather just besides consuming the message. So there is no, uh, there is no uh, issue in our application. So it may happen that you, you don't get the delivery of the message more than once. At the same time, uh, we have already seen uh, that you may receive the message more than once it really depends on the network it really depends how uh, chatty is your network maybe if the load is if there is any load on the network then you may see uh, th that the kafka broker once a timeout occurs then it re-delivers the message so now uh, if you want to have the uh, guarantee that uh, your consumer is item potent and uh, your consumer really does not f encounter with such kind of du duplicate message processing then you have to be alert you have to take a pain you have to bear that pain of adding that logic onto the application because from the broker side once you set the enable auto commit as false then kafka Kafka loses all of the restrictions because in that particular case on Kafka on the Kafka uh, documentation you must have seen that if once you have the at least one delivery semantics then uh, you may receive the message again and again and now, now uh, um, you have to add the logic in your program so that's why uh, so there is a session on the message delivery semantics. Uh, this is the section on that. And you can see that at least one messages are never lost, but maybe re delivered, we never know. Now, in order to have the at most once delivery semantic, at least one delivery semantic, uh, and you have to, if you want to imitate the exactly one's processing kind of scenario, then uh, this is the session for you. So what we are going to do is, we are going to have some kind of unique ID. So what we require is uh, 
we require unique ID and uh, we want to demonstrate uh, the exactly once processing scenario I'm not talking about exactly once delivery semantic I'm talking about exactly once processing so with the help of this we are going to get the guarantee that even though we get the message again and again the same message duplicated or re-delivered we are we are not really um, bothered about it we are so robust that we know that this message is already processed and we do not want to process the, the same message again so what you can do you can do one thing one the the simple thing that you can do is you create the unique id based on the message topic partition and then you have the combination of um, partition then you have the combination of offset and you have the combination of uh, topic so if this the, the if these are the things so this is the topic name this so you have the topic partition struct then you have the topic name you have the partition id or let's say partition number and then the offset so if you have such kind of unique identifier so you have this unique id now if you have such kind of unique id then um you are done with that so let me just uh, convert everything to the string so if you have let's say this is my message topic party so let me just change the sequence so now it is better so now you can see that you have deep offset which is um, which is your um, offset so this is the offset and the type is offset this is in 64 this is customized type then the next parameter is the is the partition which is in 32 and then last for the first one is the string so either what you can do is you can convert the string into the ascii and then you can create the uh, let's see unique identifier so that also means that you will have the identifier such as uh, let's say let, let me go back to the at least once over here you have the topic name then you have the partition and the offset convert all of this into the ascii and then uh, convert each of them into the hash and then add the hash or what you can do is you can create the string now if you use the hash uh, of all three differently and then if we add them up then uh, there may be the issue in which you will have a uh, couple of messages having the same hashes even though a uh, couple of messages belong to the different partition belong to the different offset altogether because uh, whenever you use the sum there is the probability that you have will have you will end up having the same number so that's why the preferred approach is convert this to string so i will just uh, i will not do it right now um, but I will just make use of the uh, dry flow. So you will convert this to string. Uh, you will convert this to string. And then you convert this to the string. Uh, now you can see that there is ordering, right? So the ordering is you have this um, you have this uh, uh, first is the string so uh, because the, the topic partition is the topic partition and then this is a string pointer so what you will do is you will just make use of the uh, value then what you will do you will concat that with the next one and then you'll concat the third one uh, with 
you will concat the uh, second with the third now if i print the unique id then you can see that it is new topic 0753 now the next thing that you will do is just take this number and then you can just convert that into md5 so that's what you do so that you get the uh, unique hash id and then use this unique id as a part of your uh, processing for example let's say you are indexing the data to the elastic search then you can add this uh, field into your id um elastic search id right so id is the field that is used uh, as a unique id for the documents so if that is the case then um whenever you are reindexing the same message then you will not be reindexing the data into the different address you will be using the unique id so even though you are updating the same document uh you you have the way to know whether the document exists and whether to update it or if you are storing the data into the cassandra then what you can do is you can have uh, let's say if the keys the message itself whatever you are consuming if that has some kind of unique identifier based on the business uh, business um, domain obviously so if that has some kind of unique identifier then you can use that and store your um, data into the tables or uh, and have that unique id as a part of the primary key or the Uh, the clustering uh, clustering columns uh, have that as a part of the partition id so um, or you can add the secondary index but then that is not recommended for cassandra you can have it in in rdbms but you got the point right so uh, you need to produce some kind of unique id as i have showcased over here or you need to extract your message and get the unique identifier based on your business domain based on the functionality and use that in the processing so you know whether you have processed the message and then you can either simply skip the processing or you can decide uh, whether to for example whether to reindex the payment whether to just add a data to the cassandra because that is not going to um, have any kind of implication however if it, if there are financial messages for example uh, let's say you are withdrawing the money or you are crediting the money so debit and credit operations are involved then you have to be very strict and you have to understand whether this message is already processed then just keep the processing ignore the message and move on that's it i hope you have understood how to create the item potent kafka consumer in go client in kafka go client and now you have understood the necessity of having the item potency in your processing because the because of the fact that you are committing the offsets on your own because of the fact that there is at least one delivery semantic that is being followed and because of the fact that many times it is absolutely crucial critical op operation in your application to understand that you are not reprocessing the same message you are not duplicating the messages that's it for now